and he's feeling the encumbrance of carrying the consequences of his sin. And David begins to write to the Lord, to call out to God. And after the confession, David said, I don't want to be in this place anymore. In other words, David says, uh, I'm tired of struggling in silence. And maybe I'm on somebody's street right now that's tired of struggling and keeping quiet about it. Maybe I can get one or two to continue this journey with me. Because you're tired of, of living in a relationship that's physically and psychologically and emotionally destructive to your well-being. Tired of struggling in silence. Maybe I got one or two in the place today who are tired of carrying around the scars of what church people did to you. Tired of smiling when you really feel like crying. Tired of saying amen when you really want to sit there and fold your arms. Tired of struggling in silence. Maybe I have somebody in the house today that's tired of trying to look strong. Try, tired of trying to have all the answers. Tired of trying to make everybody think you have it all together when the truth is on the inside, uh, you just as messed up as they are. Tired of struggling in silence. Come on and take this journey and let's look at what David had to say about this situation of breaking the silence. Anybody ready to break the silence today? So David says, David says, I can't carry this thing any longer. Apparently David recognizes that it's really not supposed to be this way. And maybe you've been sitting there and you know it's your fault and you know how heavy it can be but you've decided that it's just that it is better to just struggle in the silence than to embarrass yourself and let somebody know that it's hard sometimes but God told me to tell you today you don't have to carry that burden another day yes if you are willing God is willing we're gonna break the silence today look at this thing a little closer a little closer sisters and brothers apparently this issue of breaking the silence is contingent on, upon God doing several things first of all David says God uh, I want to get out of this but I need you to restore me, uh, to, to restore me, and then, and then I need you to uphold me. I'm going to say that for you again. I want to get out of this, but I need God to do some things for me. So God, I need you to restore me, uh, and then I need you to uphold me. Let me deal with the second instance first. David understands that his burden is too heavy for him to carry alone. David understands, uh, yes, that even iron wears out sometimes. David understands that he, if he keeps on going uh, in the way that he's going, he's going to walk himself in the ground. And so David says, uh, I need you uh, to be there for me to lean on you. And I don't know if you've ever found yourself uh, in a situation, uh, yes, where it appears that you can't even hold yourself up. But I think I have somebody that will wave their hand uh, and say, God will be there for you to lean on him. Our elders understood it. Uh, yes, never went to seminary or never inten attended anybody's divinity school. Uh, they just knew how to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, yes, and sometimes they would call him uh, bread in a starving land. And sometimes they would call him uh, water when I'm thirsty. Uh, but has anybody ever heard them call the name of the Lord uh, and just say he's my leaning post? When I'm tired, uh, he's my... When it don't feel like I'm going to hold up, uh, I just learn how to... <laughs> God, I need you uh, to be there. Just let me lean on you for a little while. Uh, have you ever been there before? Uh, yeah, I just need a little break. Uh, just let me... 
and God is there every time uh, every time you need somebody to hold you up uh, every time you need to put your weight on something uh, every time you need somebody to be there for you uh, won't God be there just to let you <laughs> yes I said God I need you to let me lean on you but check this out he says my my ability to break the silence is directly tied to your ability to restore me maybe you've never considered this issue of restoration before but it implies that there was something there and there is something lost David defines it he says uh, I need you to restore the joy of my salvation and so apparently at one point in David's life, he had joy. And his joy was tied to his salvation. Are y'all still walking with me in here? Now I know that we think salvation is tied to going to heaven and bless God that we are on our way to heaven. But in the Hebrew mind, they thought more concretely. They thought when God saves me, he literally saves me from a jacked up, messed up situation. He wants to God to restore him uh, to the emotional state uh, and the psychological state that he was in when God saved him. Now, he does not define uh, the, the place or the point uh, that he's talking about. But in my mind's eye, I want you to bring me back to the joy I had when Saul could have took me out. And yet you didn't let him harm a hair on my head. I want you to restore me, God, to the place I was when I had to play crazy just to get out of a trap. But you brought me out. Give me the joy, God, that you gave me when my own children turned on me. And yet you kept me in my proper place. I don't know what your point is, but I want you to know, baby, there's joy in salvation. Uh, you, you're not reading this closely enough because if you were, you would have said a louder amen than that. Uh huh, because you would realize that David's joy is not tied to David's women. David's joy is not tied to David's silver or gold. It's not tied to his position or his status in society. David says, my joy is directly tied to God's work in my life. I wanted to bring that to your attention, sisters and brothers, because things will go wrong in this life. You will have to go through some tough times. People will lie on you. Folk will drag your name through the mud. You will have some short days. Money will run a little funny. Your change will get strange. People will turn on you. But if your joy is not connected to people or things, if your joy is connected to your salvation, you can have joy in the midst of it all. I know, I know, I know that sounds churchy. I know, I know that sounds, that's, that's, that sounds too hyper spiritual for you who need it, who need to make it work for you. Let me tell you how you keep your haters at bay. Anybody have some haters in here? Let, let me tell you how you confuse your haters. Keep your joy when they dig in ditches for you. Let them see you with your shoulders back and your head up and they know they're doing everything they can to tear you down. Keep your joy when they know you catching hell and you still got a smile on your face. Still giving it 100. Uh, still praising the Lord. Still going all in. Uh, you want to shake the devil and he is up. Keep your joy. So David says, listen, I need you to be my leaning post. I need you to give me some things back. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Because, because this issue of restoration is more than likely directly tied to some, some, uh, some issue of returning. Or David perhaps has to revisit some things in order to experience restoration. 
I am afraid, sisters and brothers, that for many of us, the struggles and the strains, uh, uh, the trials and the tragedies in our lives have taken such an effect that they have drawn us away from God's will for our lives. In other words, we have gotten so caught up in doing what I got to do that we've forgotten about the vision. We've gotten so caught up in trying to survive in this mean, cruel world. Yeah, that we've forgotten about our holiness. We, we, we've gotten so caught up in singing along with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge and I'm trying not to lose my head. Because it's like a jungle sometimes and it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. So caught up. So caught up that we have given up. Given up our righteousness. And so maybe the message for David and maybe the message for Errol Domain and maybe the message for put your name in the slot is uh, you can have restoration, but you got to be willing to go back. And perhaps, perhaps the reason why we know what we need, but we have not received God's restoring power at work in our lives is because we've become so content and so comfortable in the place that's away from where God wants us, away from his will for our lives. Uh, yes, that, that we have become uh, comfortable uh, uh, and satisfied with nothing. And so, and so God says, I'm willing to restore if you're willing to go back. I like that. I like that. If you're willing to go back, if you're willing to get back to holiness, if you're willing to get back to spending time with me and me alone, if you're willing to get back to worshiping me, if, if you're willing to get back to living right because you know that's what I require of you, if, if you're willing to get back to telling your story and it don't matter if nobody will listen to you, if, you, if you're willing to get back to working hard even when it appears that your work is not, is not happening for you, if you're willing to get back to, yeah, if you're willing to get back to showing up on time and not leaving until you're supposed to leave, if you're willing to get back to just doing what's right because that's what you're supposed to do, if you're willing to to get back to taking care of your children and your grandchildren if you're willing to get back to loving your enemies if you're willing to get back to giving as the Lord requires of you if you're willing to get back to giving as a cheerful giver if you're willing to get back and serving in the ministry even if they don't take your ideas if they if you're willing to get back to standing up for yourself even when it appears you got to fight all by yourself uh, if you're willing to get back to courage and not discouragement if you're willing to hold on to hope again. Uh, I'm trying to tell you baby if you got enough nerve in you to go back God will restore. And so it appears to me that it's up to you, me, we, us together to fight, to scratch, to crawl, to do whatever we have to do to get back to the place where God wants us. Look at this again. This is God's chosen and anointed one of Israel. He's not supposed to be in this situation. And I came to tell you today, baby, you are not supposed to be suffering in silence. That's not God's plan for you. That's not his desire for you. God don't want you suffering and he definitely doesn't want you in silence.